Hey, what's going on? My name is Rubidium. This is a tutorial uh, video looking at shooting and lighting interviews. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a tutorial about lighting the face cinematically and got a lot of questions on YouTube and other places about if that's the same method I use for lighting interviews. The answer is yes. If you can light and shoot good interviews, you're probably gonna have not too much trouble finding work in any city in the world. But uh, interviews are done so often and they're often done so poorly, um, mainly due to time and space constraints that I thought I'd do a little thing here of how I light interviews and what makes, in my opinion, a good looking interview setup. So first of all, the subject, you want the person talking to the interviewer to have this three quarter, you see at the side of my face, see if I'm too far this way, my nose intersects my cheekbone and it it's distracting. If I'm too far this way, then my ear comes out and again, it sort of like fractures that um, continuity. Most people like to go just past where the ear is so that the nose is nicely contained. Uh, and I think that's a nice kind of three quarter workable look that um, says a lot about the person's face and still gives you a nice space to light. So you see in this diagram, you have camera, then eyeline, then light. And this means that the light is coming front on to the person's face, illuminating this section of it, and leaving this, sec this section in shade, so that you can then bring in a three-quarter backlight and a hair light to um, chisel that out from the background. Now, I have um, a three-quarter up here, uh, sorry, a hair light up here, which you can see what that's doing, and I have a three-quarter backlight here. And without them, it's a much moodier look um, it doesn't nearly isolate and uh, it doesn't create nearly as much dimensionality. So let's turn this guy back on. Let's turn this guy back on. I've tried to do these lots of different ways. Um, the way that I'm currently liking uh, the setup is to have them both off the same light stand. I don't particularly like to use C stands for interview lighting because you have something very heavy and dangerous right above the um, interviewee's head. Uh, and C stands are just a real pain to transport in a normal car. They're a real pain to get in and out of location. That's the backlights. Talk about the, the key light in itself. Um, to get nice, soft key lighting, this is not too intricate a setup. It's not my usual light mat that I use. This is just a essentially a one by one um, LED panel with a shoot through photographic umbrella on the top of it. And what it lets that that lets me do is create a light source that's as big as the part of me that I'm filming. So a, a, equivalent, you know, two foot by two foot, and it's two or three feet away from me. So it's as big as my subject, me, and it's that far away from me. And if we had to do a full um, a full shot of me, so from head to head to foot, I would need to find a light source that was six foot um, tall or wide, and I would place that six foot away from me. So the ratio of light to size to subject to distance remains constant. Because I have picked a kind of moodier, um, more dramatic interview lighting here, you know, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a photographer, I've decided to shoot myself in this studio. It's got some cool lenses in the background. I've got the, um, the lens set to f3.2, which kind of bokers out the lights in the lens cabinet. I've placed a, uh, another LED stick back here to a really warm color so that it um, gives, gives, again, some more split lighting interest. The last thing I have going on here is a just piece of um, polyboard or beadboard um, on a lighting stand with a cl clamp and that's filling in the shadows in my face. You can see without it, it's like a much more dramatic look. I'm actually not talking to an interviewer, I'm looking at the um, Blackmagic Video Assist and I have it doing double duty with the um, magic arm or friction arm with the microphone about 
a foot from my mouth. So this is something that works for me. This is something that I know I can depend on. Usually, I don't usually use a fill board. Um, what I use is the ambient light of the location to be my fill. Then I power up my key light a couple of stops above that. So I have a two to three light uh, stop ratio between the light side and the dark side of my face. And then I tend to mirror the key, maybe just a little bit higher with this back and top light. So it's sort of like um, light, dark, light, and gives, um, a, uh, again, dimension to, the, to the, the subject. I always like my key light on my face to be a couple of stops, at least two or three stops brighter than the background. But that doesn't mean, I mean, here it's about seven stops brighter than the background, but that doesn't mean that you have to um, rely on this. If I open the windows of my studio, you'll see the light come in. I'll have to stop the camera down, but it'll mean that we get a brighter background and prob an interview lighting that with just opening the curtain, an interview lighting that's a lot more um, breezier and uh, maybe more appropriate for, you know, a medical um, interview or something to do with, uh, you know, something not quite so artistic and serious. And there you go, it's brought the background up a little bit, it's brought the fill up quite a lot. Um, now we're only about a stop difference between the, the key and the fill, but it still gives dimensionality. One last thing that's really critical with interviews is eyeline. You need to raise or lower your interviewer's eyeline so that the person is looking direct at them. If I lower the, um, the screen I'm looking at here and you have the person talking down to the interviewer or you have the person talking up to the interviewer, it really breaks the sense of connection um, between the viewer and the person that they're watching. That also goes for the camera. You want your camera to be very level and not shooting down or shooting up on your subject. I really like to frame interviews um, wide with a, a tiny bit of headspace and sort of down past the person's collar. Because this camera shoots uh, 4K, I can easily go in and create a much tighter 1080p crop and still really get onto people's, uh, to really get a nice image. It might also be a good idea if you're doing something um, confessional, something very dramatic in your interviews, like to bring the person's eyeline a little closer to camera, um, maybe even have the interviewer's head right next to the lens, because that allows people to see both eyes much more clearly, and you can cut, you can really push in and get something uh, of heart-rending detail. That's my basic interview lighting setup. Um, I use a key light, uh, either a reflector or fill behind the camera um, or the ambient fill of the room to uh, help illuminate the face and the background. Then, like I said, I use a back kicker and a hair light to chisel that person out from the background. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you got something out of it. Um, I'm going to keep doing these videos. I think the I'm doing. I've got a couple more planned for actual camera stuff, and then I'm going to move into post and talk about how I color correct, how I edit, um, how I manage my file structures. Hopefully, someone finds that helpful.